The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he taught them. I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while the two of you are on the way to court. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, Jesus goes up the mountain. This is the Sermon on the Mount. He's preaching. He's the new Moses. Moses went up Mount Sinai, and the law came down to him in the form of the Ten Commandments, the external law. Jesus goes up the mountain now, and he delivers a new covenant. And the new covenant is one written in our hearts. It takes the old law, which was inscribed on stone, and he now wants it in our hearts. So then he says to his own disciples, I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. What he's getting at there is the scribes and the Pharisees were experts at keeping the law externally because they were of the Old Testament mindset. Now, in the Old Testament, it was very important to keep the law outwardly because it was a show to the pagan nations that Israel was a chosen people set apart by God to come out of that pagan idolatry and to be totally devoted to God, there had to be that covenant sign. Well, the scribes and the Pharisees added to the law hundreds of meticulous regulations, but their hearts were far from God. So they were liable to judgment, and Jesus is teaching his own disciples that it's very, very important what is in our heart. Do we give allegiance, obedience, willingly in the heart of who we are, our emotions, our thoughts, our attitudes? At that level is where Jesus wants compliance, obedience, and love. Because then, not only externally will there be that sign, but we will be evangelists because our whole life will be transformed. So Jesus says, I tell you, if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother and sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Notice the escalation in the judgment. Anger is liable to judgment at the local court. Insulting a brother and sister, you're brought before the council. That would be the Sanhedrin, far more serious, august body. But if you go so far as to say you fool, then the hell of fire, the final judgment. What Jesus is getting at here is that we've got to check sin quickly, because if not, if we allow our heart to be taken over by anxiety and resentment, brooding over past hurts, things escalate very quickly. And then our hearts are given over to evil. And in fact, the scribes and the Pharisees, although at this point in Jesus' ministry, have not murdered, they are plotting in their hearts how to eliminate Jesus. And they will eventually. So Jesus says, if you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember you've got something against a brother or sister, 
leave your gift there. Go reconcile with your brother and sister. Again, Jesus wants that quick reconciliation before things fester. And he also wants a genuine heart, not hypocrisy, not coming to the altar with a gift, while at the same time your heart is not reconciled to God and to your brother. Because that hypocrisy causes great damage, as we all know. Well, in the first reading, the mercy of God is really on display. Now, this is quite remarkable because sometimes we think the God of the Old Testament is rather stern, fire or brimstone, whereas Jesus is the kind, forgiving Savior. But here we have Ezekiel saying, if a wicked person turns away from their sins, none of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them. A complete wiping away of an entire life of sin if you turn to the Lord. Now that's in the Old Testament. Now, there is also justice, because God speaking through Ezekiel says also, when the righteous turn away from their righteousness, none of their righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered. In other words, you can't sort of store up past good deeds in a kind of bank account and live off the interest while committing iniquity. God does not want us to keep a ledger. Rather, our hearts are to be transformed. That's the new covenant, and that's what Jesus is doing here in the Sermon on the Mount. The proper response is actually the psalmist. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand that there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered? Well, as we continue our journey through Lent, let us ask God to transform our hearts even more completely devoted to him in every aspect of our lives. Then we truly will be disciples and have a mission and a testimony not just by our words, but by our whole disposition, knowing when to give encouragement to someone who's struggling, certainly praying, interceding for our brothers and sisters, genuinely from the heart, loving as God has loved us. So with that, let us pray.